Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really, really well. Just a disclaimer, I have got COVID right now, so my nose is running like there's no tomorrow. So that is why I'm very sniffly. I've been wanting to film this video for about two years now, and the thought absolutely terrifies my guts. I really am quite scared to film it. I'm not very good at being serious. I don't really like opening up, to be honest. It daunts me a lot, even though my audience is is quite little. The reason why I'm doing this video in the first place is because I have watched so many videos like this and it has just made the world of difference. Seeing people who are in a similar situation to me, it's made me feel so much more normal. So I thought, you know what, if I can have that effect on one person, whether it's literally that much of an effect, then already I'm content and I feel like it'll be worth making this video, so. Here we go. Ah, in this video, I'm just gonna be talking about my personal story with anxiety and how it came about, how it progressed. I wanna do a lot of other videos about my mental health as well, but I will ramble way too much and I can't get it all into one video, so I'm gonna make a little mini series, I think. I've always been a very anxious kid. My family will back me up on that one. As a child, I had really bad health anxiety. I assumed it was normal. I assumed everyone was like that. But I was constantly Googling my symptoms, sat up at night worrying about what I had or what I thought I had. And people would laugh it off and even I would laugh it off. But really, it wasn't right. It wasn't healthy for me to be thinking that much into my health. I would actually make myself sicker from convincing myself that I had a particular illness and there was no two ways about it people could try and convince me otherwise but i wouldn't believe them looking back at it now it was really really unhealthy but i didn't understand it i didn't get it aside from health anxiety i had my first proper panic attack when i was actually on weed now i debated talking about this online because it's not something that i particularly want to share this incident but equally I think it's really, really important to highlight just how big an effect we can actually have on you if you don't take it right. And unfortunately, it had a very, very big effect on me because I didn't take it right. It was after COVID. I was just feeling a bit reckless. I was feeling a bit cooped up from quarantine. Just wanted to go a bit crazy and I just took too much. When it started to have an effect, I went crazy. And when I say crazy, I mean crazy. I was screaming, I was crying, I was trying to run out into the road. I couldn't control my emotions at all. I couldn't control what I was doing. It was terrifying. My friends were trying to calm me down, but bless them, like there was only so much they could do. In the end, James came over and I was very, very sick and he managed to calm me down to some extent just to get me to sleep. What I think happened was the weed had triggered a panic attack and it was the scariest night of my life hands down because I was completely out of control anyway a couple of weeks went on and I was fine I just put it down to the weed and thought oh that was a weird night but whatever and then a couple of weeks on I was in the car with James he was driving and I was just thinking about the night again and I was like oh that really was quite scary wasn't it the more I thought about it the more I started to feel like it again. And I remember saying to James, something's not right here. I feel really weird again. I feel like I'm on weed. And he was like, oh, that's strange. I ended up having a full on panic attack and this lasted for a lot of the night. I was constantly in and out of the toilet because I thought I was gonna be sick. I felt really faint. I felt so spaced out. I felt like I was in a dream because I was at James's family home. So I spent most of the evening in his bedroom, but I felt so suffocated and I kept having to go outdoors. There was just this feeling of impending doom. It just feels like something really, really bad is going to happen. And this is one thing that I will always say about panic attacks, and this is how it makes me feel, but it sounds so weird. I always think when I start to have a panic attack, everything seems really stale and off and wrong. And I can't even describe it. It sounds so weird. James has like this little cat door stop thing outside his room or like on his door. And I remember looking at it and it really scared me and everything just seemed really scary. It's almost like a less extreme version of the upside down in Stranger Things. That's kind of how it feels like to me. Everything just seems 
gross and horrible and not nice and people can be talking to you but the words are going in one ear and out the other yeah i just remember looking at this cat and thinking oh god why does that seem so scary right now and then the next day i woke up and looked at the cat and got really triggered it was so weird i ended up going back to my family and just crying to them because i was like i don't know what's going on i don't know what's happening and then i ended up having quite consistent panic attacks for about a month to the point where I couldn't actually leave the house. I couldn't eat. I started to lose weight really, really quickly. I was becoming really, really miserable with it. I was becoming really, really dependent on James and my mum because I just didn't want to be alone. Not only was I anxious all the time, but I was then starting to become really, really miserable because every single day I was waking up with no motivation, no routine and just constant panic attacks. I'd just be ready and waiting for the next one. And that's not how you want to live at all. It was terrible and really, really scary, to be honest. I was becoming completely void to all my emotions and I'd never, ever, ever had that in my life. I ended up going to a and &E one night because I was so convinced that something really bad was happening. And it wasn't until about a month down the line that I went to a doctor about it because I knew something wasn't right. I remember this one GP in particular was, or this one doctor was so good this one guy was so good because he tried to really understand where I was coming from and what was actually going on here. He said, okay, tell me, what are you worried about here? What do you think this could be? And I listed him so many different things. And he said, okay, we'll do tests for those. And he basically just ruled out all of my worries. I am so forever grateful for that man because he didn't just think, oh, okay, she's anxious. Let's put her on antidepressants. He said, okay, you're worried about these things. Let let me assure you that it's not those things. And at the time, I really, really needed that. And then he diagnosed me with anxiety and said it would probably be good to go on antidepressants. And so I did. I was actually allergic to the first lot that I went on, which was seriously annoying because I had like two weeks of being miserable on them because that's kind of how antidepressants work. They get worse before they get better all the symptoms do anyway and then turns out i came out in a massive rash so i had to come off them anyway i was put on escitalopram and i started therapy and i also started uni again these three things were so important to me and managed to kind of drag me out of my slumbers having a routine was just so good having some motivation i then started my job again and the escitalopram managed to kind of level out my emotions again and i felt a lot more normal i remember coming back from uni at christmas and my mom was like oh my gosh you're so much more like millie again and it was so true, I was, I was way more like myself and I was able to go days without having a panic attack and it was just so nice to know that I was on the mend because at one point I honestly thought it was never ending, I didn't think it would ever get better. I thought that my brain was just stale now and it was never gonna recover basically and I did I did start to recover and I started to get better each day as it came and I knew it wasn't going to be an overnight thing I knew it would take a while but by Christmas I was starting to feel a, a bit more like myself and then the whole of third year actually was really good for me because it was so stressful I was so distracted with uni stress that I didn't really ever think about anxiety once i finished uni i started to get really anxious again because i didn't have that motivation i didn't have that routine i started to get really depressed again intrusive thoughts is one thing that i get quite frequently when i'm on my own and have too much time to think and it's horrible i absolutely hate intrusive thoughts it can properly ruin a lot of things for me and it has ruined a lot of things for me. I started therapy again um, the next summer because I was like, I don't want to go back to where I was. And she was so, so good. Even just learning about anxiety and depression and intrusive thoughts, why it happens, how it happens, is so useful. And I was then able to separate myself from things like intrusive thoughts. So it's now been two years since that quite dreadful summer and I would definitely say that there's been a lot of ups and downs it hasn't been plain sailing but it is a slow progress and I I've never been as bad as I I was that that year and that in itself I'm so proud of I honestly thought that I was trapped in that mindset forever and 
if you're in that position and you think that too, oh, it gets better, it gets so much better and I remember thinking it would never, it would never get better and it does. Now that I have a job that I really enjoy, that has obviously made quite a big effect but I've also got an anxiety toolkit which has helped me enormously, just a list of things that help me when I'm having a panic attack or that I can feel one coming on. I'll explain in another video all the things that have helped me in the past, but I will say I think it differs for everyone. Things like deep breathing and meditation, maybe I'm doing it wrong, I don't know, but it's never really helped me, whereas other things do work for me and it's taken me quite a long time to realise what things do. I'm still learning a lot about myself and what works and what doesn't and I think that's the same for everyone so don't feel like just because you've tried one thing and it hasn't worked that nothing's going to work for you because that is not the case at all. I still do get panic attacks a lot. A lot of the time in public places where I'm on my own I get it a lot on trains and tubes and buses and public transport but the more you learn about your triggers and what sets you off the easier it is to understand it and tackle it. <laughs> And I have also tried to push myself to do things that have, is this wonky? Have um, been quite out of my comfort zone, So <laughs> I don't ever want my anxiety to stop me from doing things because that is one thing that would absolutely break my heart, to be honest. Things like Harry Styles, I got really panicky at Harry Styles. At Harry Styles. <laughs> Why is my voice horrible? I told myself, I am not missing seeing this guy because of my darn anxiety, it's not happening. So I pushed myself through it and it was it was fine. It's, it's a horrible thing and I really do sympathise with anyone who has to go through it because it ain't nice. It ain't nice. Anyway, I think that's all I have to say for today's video. But as I said, I will be doing more in the future on mental health as much as it scares me to death. <laughs> have I been out of focus this whole time? If this video helps you in any way, even if it's like literally that much then please shoot me a message because that would mean the world so yeah anyway i'm gonna stop rambling now i'm sure i'll see you very soon have a great day goodbye